I'm Rufus Isaacs from the Department of Entomology at Michigan State University and I'm the, the entomologist that works with the grape industry here. And we're here today in the horticulture vineyard to talk about Japanese beetle, one of the insects that causes some devastation across the grape industry in the eastern United States if it's not controlled. So Japanese beetle is originally from Japan and has been in this country for almost 100 years now and it's spread across the eastern US and is present in most areas of grape production uh, east of the Rockies. It is a beetle that has typically one generation a year and the beetles are out during July and August which is when they're feeding on the grape foliage potentially and sometimes into September. And then the female beetles lay their eggs in grassy areas. They prefer grassy and moist soil so if you have that and we typically do around vineyard sites that gives it a good place to lay eggs. And then the larvae develop in the soil. They feed on the roots of the of the grass and, and weeds. And then again in late June and into July, the beetles start emerging again. This insect can reach really high abundance in areas where the landscape is suitable for it. And if there's wild grape or raspberry or blackberry, that gives it good host plants during the summer. And it can feed on over 300 different species of plant. And then if there's grass, which there typically is, and some moisture in the soil, uh, it does very well too. They come to grapevines because this is a, an attractive host for them and feed on the leaves. They tend to feed on the, on the sunny areas of the canopy and so you'll see more feeding up high than down low on the leaves. But then their feeding does this skeletonizing where you can see that that leaf has, has had a, a large proportion of its leaf area removed by the beetle's feeding and um, probably not doing a whole lot of photosynthesis to send sugars to the clusters. Nobody likes to see these beetles uh, feeding on their, on their leaves, but it is worth keeping in mind that, that vines do have a, a significant amount of tolerance for leaf area feeding. And they have a lot of extra canopy, typically. When you move into the wine grape varieties and some of the hybrids, though, it can be a little bit, bit of a different story because those tend to be much more susceptible to feeding. And those canopies tend to be much more in balance with the crop. So you may have a smaller window of tolerance in those vines for leaf area loss. So Japanese beetles are a pest that, that can affect grapes. Um, there are a number of control methods that can be used to minimize their impact in, in the vineyard. One of those, of course, is to take away their, their egg laying sites and remove grass. But um, I think for erosion control and many other good environmental reasons, growers are unwilling to go for clean cultivation. But if you did, that would also reduce the populations. There are some microorganisms that can be used to apply to the soil that are more of a long-term strategy. My colleague here in Michigan that works with the turf grass industry has found a stomach parasite that attacks Japanese beetles. And if you have a site with this parasite, you can then move some grubs around and maybe kickstart that in your own, uh, in your own vineyard. And then uh, there is a, an interest always in trapping these beetles out and using a, a monitoring trap that's highly effective and very popular for getting beetles and, and catching them and, and removing them from the vineyard site. But in my experience, using a monitoring trap is, is often more of a problem where it's a magnet for the beetles and it pulls them into your site and then you may end up having more beetles and more damage than you would have done if you hadn't used the trap. So we, we always joke that you can buy a trap and give it to your neighbor so that it, um, so that it doesn't come to your site. But, but I do know some growers that will use the trap and put it in the, in the woods border, at least so it's not drawing the beetles into the vineyard. And then of course, as, as a, a, a final option, there are some, some registered insecticides that can be used. And particularly the neonicotinoid class is a new class of insecticides that are systemic, um, can be applied to the foliage, would get absorbed into the leaves, and then if a Japanese beetle comes in and nibbles on those, um, then you, that insect would be uh, either repelled or killed by the residue and reduce the damage that way. There are, of course, a lot of um, contact insecticides as well, and uh, the carbamate or organophosphate insecticides and pyrethroids would have that immediate uh, effect and knock the beetles down and, and um, prevent them from feeding on your, on your foliage. Depending upon which kinds of insecticides you're using and the timing as well, you can also think about whether 
they would be getting you control of Japanese beetle and other insects that might be there at the same time, such as, such as great berry moth. So those are things to think about as you're um, considering how you're going to tackle Japanese beetle. <laughs>